So, uh, good evening, respected professors, learned faculty members, dear scholars, my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen. Today, in our weekly talk series of Tivlani, we have Dr. Mimi K. Ijung as our invited speaker. So, before I invite Dr. Mimi to deliver his talk. Uh, it is my privilege to introduce Dr. Mimi K. Ijung. Dr. Mimi K. Ijung is the head to the department of TNEDA, Nagaland University. Uh, Dr. Ijung received her PhD degree from University of Delhi. And right now uh, she is holding the post of head in the department of TNEDA, Nagaland Universities, as I stated earlier. So. She is the executive member to the newly, from, newly formed Linguistic Society of India. And uh, she has contributed many work in terms of language and linguistics, in, uh, especially in Naga languages. So she has given many talk in national and international levels, and she has published many papers in <clears throat> journal and as our, uh, book chapters in edited books also. So under Dr. Mimi uh, as, co uh, as the principal investigator, she has been carrying out many projects, especially uh, she has been carrying projects in Naga languages. So uh, if I'm supposed to mention some of those, then Yes, typology of Naga languages, a pilot study, which is under the Department of Arts and Culture under the government of Nagaland. And she is the principal investigator in the development of Kimningan grammar, which is sponsored by Kimningan community. And she, she was the co-principal investigator in digital preservation, analysis and technology development of the language of Northeast India funded by the EIT New Delhi with IIT Guwahati, and she was the co. Uh, she was the principal investigator of a preliminary investigation of the speech sound of the languages in Nagaland, which was sponsored by SCERT Nagaland. So, <clears throat> apart from this, also before the appointment uh, uh, to the current department, Madam was also teaching at University of Hyderabad. Yeah, these are the, some information that I would like to share uh, with our attendee. So uh, it's the time for our speaker to kindly deliver his talk. So Madam, over to you. Thank you, Vijay, for that generous introduction. And uh, without much ado, I will uh, start sharing my screen right now. Can you see? Yeah, we can see it. Uh, the topic of my talk is uh, the interface of tone and morphosyntax in Tenidia uh, or Angami. Um, and as we all know, Tenidia is a Tibeto Burman language spoken in Nagaland in the northeast of India. Uh, it is a tonal language and tone plays a major role in the morphosyntax of the language. Uh, this paper has been organized in the following way, and uh, the uh, paper examines tone as it operates on firstly the case system in the language, and uh, secondly uh, on a set of monotransitive verbs in the language. So that is a tonal system will be set up with reference to the verb 
in relation to the NPs uh, in the language. Then finally, we will see the interplay of these stone bearing words with uh, anaphors in the language. Um, the description of the case system in Tenige is based on Dixon, 1994, and the content of this talk is actually heavily influenced by uh, his book on ergativity. And uh, using Dixon's nominal hierarchy as a model, a hierarchy of the case system in Tenige is set up by incorporating tones and suffixes to differentiate cases. Um, I would like to mention that though traditional case labels like nominative and the accusative have been used to describe the case forms, uh, it would however be good to first draw one's attention to the fact as found in the literature that languages can be divided into two types as far as case marking is concerned. And the two types are languages which have a semantically based uh, case marking and languages which have a syntactically based marking. Under semantically based marking, we have languages where the grammatical marking directly reflects a particular sentence in an instance of use. Example, where the action is purposeful or accidental, while under syntactically based marking, we have those languages where grammatical marking relates to the prototypical meaning of the verb used. For example, the subject of hit will always be marked in the same way, irrespective of whether the hitting was done accidentally or on purpose. Case labels such as ergative, absolutive, nominative, or the accusative are only applicable to languages with syntactically based mark as mentioned in Dixon, by Dixon. Against this backdrop, the following discussion demonstrates that Tenibia follows both semantic-based marking uh, up to some extent and syntactic-based marking where the interplay with tone occurs. There's something happening in the screen, Bijan. Yeah, uh, please. Hello. Move this window. Yeah, ma'am. This is a uh, this is mark coming off. How how do I remove that? Please I do not know whether how it it, it is coming off. <laughs> yeah, I think this uh, it's going to appear. Yeah, it dis disappear. And Both again, by appear. no, it's coming off. No, I think, how uh, do we remove it? To reshare it once again, uh, because I think you. You're not sharing the PowerPoint. You're sharing your screen. Okay. Yeah, so my screen is this. I'm not sharing my PowerPoint. Hello. Okay, then yeah, better you <laughs> share with the PowerPoint, madam. It says you are screen sharing. Yes, so I think you... And my PowerPoint is something. Please try to reshare, madam. Can I stop then share I... then? It's yeah, better please to yeah, reshare it. Okay. So I'll stop sharing. Yeah. And then I will share again, is it? Yeah, yeah please try now. All right. Can you see it? Uh, yeah, we can see it now. OK. Can you still see it? Can you see my screen? No, it's uh, we can see a uh, blank screen with green color only. All right. That is when I did the slideshow, then it went back to that one. OK. Um, yeah, yeah. We can see uh, your examples now. You can see my examples now. Yeah, one, okay. two, three, four. Yeah. But you cannot see this. And what do you see over here? 
now uh, case and tone system in 10 idea yes ma'am yes 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 okay yes. now you can see it no yes okay all right um, so uh, to start with we have our case and tone systems in tenidia uh, in tenidia some four np's can be marked by the suffix a or it can be left unmarked there are some intransitive verbs like ne to laugh ruku to cough vo to go vor to come nimopar get mad which can either take the a suffix or the zero marking on their snp so the snp is the 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 subject of the intransitive verb depending on the deliberateness of the act some other intransitive verbs on the other hand allow only the zero marking these include sie to die memie to grow ta to stand and ze to sleep among transitive verbs um among transitive verbs some can never have the suffix a on their a and p for example dislike or to like or to hit to kill to eat to cook and to give uh, uh, as some examples now this is when the a and p that is the subject of the transitive verb a and p is a first person or a second person singular personal pronoun if the a and p is a third person it is most it is mostly the case that the occurrence of the suffix a is obligatory and uh, so this phenomenon um, will be referred to the nominal hierarchy which uh, will be uh, uh, discussed shortly uh, there is a semantic basis to these alternate markings of the a and the s uh, the suffix a indicates that the actor is acting deliberately or in control of the situation or for some reason fulfilling some obligation or emphasizing his or her role in the action so we have um, examples 1 and 2 uh, that illustrate a transitive verb being used in different ways in sentence 1 we find the occurrence of the suffix a which gives the interpretation of deliberateness uh, volitionality or emphasis in contrast in sentence 2 illustrates the absence of a and the interpretation that we find in 1 is lost in sentences 3 and 4 the presence and the absence of a clearly distinguishes sentences of uh, the sentence cibu beat in 3 where cibu is the agent and someone beat cibu as in 4 where cibu is the patient uh, as mentioned earlier there are some monotransitive verbs in tenidie that can never have the a marking on their a and p that is um, the verbs like to dislike and to like etc now this is true only when the a and p is a first person or second person singular personal pronoun the converse is where the a and p that is the first and the second singular personal pronoun takes zero marking the a marking is obligatory with the other a and p's so sentences 5 to 8 illustrate this point in sentences 5 and 6 we have we have the first and the second singular pronouns as the a and p's and we find that the occurrence of the suffix a in 5b and 6b makes the sentence unacceptable whereas in sentences 7 and 8 the a and p is in the third person and the occurrence of a 
the suffix a is obligatory. Now, Dixon, 1994-35, mentions that a language that has both syntactically and semantically based marking, and that it is, it is possible for a language to effectively combine the two possibilities. He further, in view of the uh, suffix a marking on the a and p's, which are proper nouns, including the third person pronoun, and the zero marking on a and p's, which are pronouns on the one hand, and the pronouns inflecting for the accusative case on the other hand, one is drawn to the split conditioned by the reference of the core and p's. And uh, taking from Dixon again, that if pronouns and nouns have different systems of case inflection, then the pronoun system will be acquisitive and the noun system ergative and never the other way round. Following this, the nominal hierarchy sets up a hierarchy in terms of which the acquisitive or the ergative splits are motivated. This relates to the fact that certain kinds of MPs are very likely to be the controller of an event others less likely, and others most unlikely. So according to Dixon, those participants at the left hand of the hierarchy, as given in table one, those participants at the left hand of the hierarchy are most likely to be agents, that is to be in A function, and those at the right hand end are most likely to be patients, that is to be in O function. And this whole proposal is based on economy and that it is more natural and economical to mark a participant when it is in an unaccustomed role. That is, it would be expected of a case marking language to provide morphological marking of an NP from the right hand side of the hierarchy when it is in A function and of an NP from the left most end when in O function as an alternate to providing ergative marking for all A NPs. Basing on this principle, one can say that Tenidier follows a syntactic based case marking system and within which it exhibits a split ergative system based on person and number. Uh, the table two presents the case forms in Tenidia indicated by prone and the A marking. Now, following the case forms given in this table, and in addition to the examples which we saw, in five to eight, we can set up a case system hotelier as given in table three. Now, when we look at this table, uh, we see that an ergative case is used with the right hand on the right hand end up to some point in the middle of the hierarchy and an acquisitive case from that point on up to the extreme left of the hierarchy. Here we have the acquisitive being realized as low tone. So that is in the O, uh, in the o column. So here it is being realized as low tone. In the, third, in the first and the third person uh, singular pronouns and in, in the second person while the nominative is unmarked. Now, uh, the nominative languages also have a case system marked by tone in which the accusative is the unmarked term. Whereas in Tenidia, it is the nominative, which is the unmarked term. For the rightmost columns, we have the ergative A for the third person singular pronoun plus other NPs and nie and nie for the interrogatives. Note that there is an overlapping 
on the third person singular pronouns where the A is marked for ergative and the O is marked for the acquisitive. Now, moving on, uh, we move on to the monotransitives verbs in Tenige. Now, this is this section I had uh, also shared uh, or I had presented uh, in one of the seminars that was organized by CNTLS, but uh, it is relevant uh, to this uh, talk as well. So I will briefly go through it for the benefit of those people who, who did not attend that talk. Now, so this section, it gives an analysis of tone as it operates on monotransitive verbs in the language. And a very brief description of the VA and the VO verbs is that the VA verbs carry a high tone and permit its object to be dropped. VO verbs, on the other hand, carry a low tone and do not uh, permit its object to be dropped. So we find the examples in 9 and 10, that is the VO verbs and the VO verbs, that is 11 and 12. Um, the high tone that marks the A or the SNP, that is the A and uh, the NO, also marks the verb, that is the VA verb this one um, and as uh, yeah so in sentences 11 and 12 we find this example and in sentences 9 and 10 the low tone that marks the onp that is the a uh, and the n uh, also marks the verb that is the vo verb now if we compare sentences 11a and uh, 11b, we find that the occurrence of the O and P and with the V A verb is optional. In contrast, sentences 9 and 10 illustrate that the occurrence of the O and P with the V O verbs is, however, obligatory and cannot be dropped. Now, though the third person singular pronoun is homophonous for the A or the SNP position and the ONP position. It is interesting to note that this VA versus VO tone distinction is retained in the third person singular pronoun. And this we find in sentences 11, 13A and 13B. However, this distinction is lost with the other ONPs, including interrogatives, as uh, shown in sentences 14A, B, and 15A, B. Now, similar to the case system that was set up in table uh, three, table four sets up a tone system for Tenivier. And um, in table four, the tonal markings indicate the tones on the verb in relation to the NPs in A function and O function. So with reference to the nominal hierarchy and the case system, the singular personal pronouns in Temidie are more likely to be in A function. So when they are in an unaccustomed O function, uh, they are marked with the low tone, and the verb that occurs with them, in this case, the VO verbs, also carries the same tone. On the other hand, the NPs at the right hand end of the column are more likely to be in O function and therefore retain their original tone when they are in an accustomed role. The verbs that occur with them, in this case, the VA verbs to carry the unmarked high tone. The verbs in the right word columns are more likely to be in O function. Now note that the VA verbs to carry the unmarked high tone. Uh, no, sorry, the note that the VA verbs have uniformity of tone uh, in relation 
to all the NPs in A function. This indicates that when an NP is in A function, that NP carries its original tone, even if it is in an unaccustomed role. Due to this, it can be said that the VA verb agrees with the NP that is in A function. Uh, as mentioned uh, earlier, the VO form of the verb does not occur by itself with the A and P. Thus, we can say that A is cross-referenced on VA and O is cross-referenced on the VO verb. And the set of verbs that pattern in this way are monosyllabic and monotransitive. For example, verbs like mu to see, v to beat, kriye to love, bie to touch, uh, tu to collide, and ze to pierce. And um, those verbs that permit an animate ONP. Um, now, moving on, we will be. I would like to present the interplay of tone bearing verbs with anaphors in Tenidia. Now, the lexical uh, pronouns in Tenidia is formed by the combination of uh, the pronoun plus the emphatic plus the pronoun. And the reflexive forms in all the three persons are listed in table uh, five. Uh, the reflexives are all in the acquisitive form. So in the first person, acquisitive is indicated by a low tone. In the second person, it is indicated by a low tone and also by a morphological change. So no changes to n. However, in the third person, again, there is no change in tone, nor is there a change in the morphology. Uh, nominal, the language has a nominal reciprocal form equivalent to the English each other. It is a reduplicated form that is uh, which means some, dual, some. Then Tenidia has no verbal reflexes and it, em it employs only the nominal reflexive in its reduplicated form. It, however, has a verbal reciprocal marker K, which is prefixed to the verb. It may be mentioned here that the co-occurrence of the verbal reciprocal marker and the nominal reciprocal uh, is not permitted in the language as illustrated by the ungrammatical sentence in 16. So we cannot say that is not acceptable, where you have both the, uh, the, the nominal form and the, the, the verbal form occurring together. Uh, now, With reference to sentences 17 and 18, note that in 17, in sentence 17, the VA form of the verb occurs with the nominal reciprocal on your wall. So here we have the VA form. Uh, whereas in sentence 18, the VO form of the verb occurs with the verbal reciprocal marker K. So the verbal reciprocal, it occurs with the VO form of the verb, whereas the nominal uh, reciprocal, it occurs with the VA form of the verb. Um, and as mentioned earlier, the co-occurrence of the nominal reciprocal and the verbal reciprocal results in ungrammaticality, as uh, illustrated earlier in sentence 16. The fact that the nominal reciprocal does not occur with the verbal reciprocal indicates that the verbal reciprocal K detransitivizes the verb, thereby decreasing the valency of the verb. Now, this is a phenomenon which we find in Mizo also, and um, uh, uh, as reported uh, by Subarau. And uh, this results in an instance of argument suppression 
as um, illustrated in sentence 18. Um, and as mentioned earlier, now it is the VA verbs which permit its object to be dropped, whereas the VO verbs do not permit their objects to be dropped. So out of the two types of transitive verbs, rather than detransitivizing a verb that permits its object to be dropped, it makes more sense to detransitivize the verb that, that does not permit its object to be dropped. And hence, this explains why the occurrence of the verbal reciprocal is restricted to the VO verbs alone. It is because the verbal, re, uh, the verbal reciprocal, it detransitizes the verb and uh, the VO verb is um, the verb which does not uh, permit its object to be dropped. Now, regarding nominal reflexives, it has been mentioned that reflexives occur in the accusative form of the singular pronouns. Now, the accusative singular pronouns, personal pronouns, are compatible only with the VO verbs, and hence the nominal reflexives too are restricted to the VO verbs only alone. Now, the reason for the occurrence of the VA verb with the nominal polymorphemic reciprocal honyehua is that the language makes a morphological distinction between singular pronouns and non-singular pronouns and that non-singular pronouns are treated in the same way or are at par with proper nouns and interrogated. So with reference to the proposed uh, tone system, which was given in table four, we find that the other ONPs occur with the VA verbs, thus the nominal reciprocal for Nyoho being plural would find its place in the right hand end of the column and hence occur with the VA verbs. Um, so with that, uh, I've come to the end of my talk. It's a very short talk. And so in conclusion, I would like to say that with reference to the nominal hierarchy, uh, this talk firstly established the case system in Tenide, and secondly, a tone system of the language in relation to the verb and its ONPs. And uh, finally, we saw the interplay of the tonal verbs with anaphors in the language. The talk illustrates that the language follows a dual system of case marking, and that within the syntactic based marking system, the language exhibits split ergativity based on person and number. And uh, here it is pertinent to point out that in the speech of the younger generation, the A marking is either totally dropped or used at all instances, irrespective of person or number. And the irregular nature of the A marking is indicative of a case system in transition and that the language is undergoing change, moving either from an accusative to an ergative system or from an ergative to an accusative system. And uh, this is a matter for further study. And um, with that, I end my talk and this is my reference. Thank you. And if there are any questions, I welcome them. Thank you, Madam, uh, for that informative and insightful talk on the interface of tones with the morphosyntactic constructions in the 10 EDA. Uh, now it's time for a question and answer. Any question, queries, uh, participants can unmute and can speak to our speaker. So the floor is open for the discussion. Oh, so that was just 35 minutes sir, that I spoke, but half an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah around 35 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. So I invite uh, participants to ask question query from the speaker. Yeah, we have them so here. 
Yeah, maybe uh, nice. a quick question. Uh, I think uh, that was a interesting talk. Pretty complicated, I think. Uh, Thank you. With the uh, uh, case marking. You said that this occurs only with monosyllabic uh, uh, verbs. That the, yes. So what, what, what act, so just curious to know what, what happens if you have a bisyllabic uh, verb instead of a monosyllabic? Oh, do you get these tonal changes? No, it does not occur with, uh, with disyllabic uh, uh, words, verbs. No, so we see this phenomenon only with the monotransitive and the monosyllabic verbs. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I do not know why that is the case, you know, mm. but um, um, it is something that which, uh, which we need to keep in mind uh, if one, one wants to do a further study regarding this. And um, I remember, um, uh, who was it uh, who had mentioned in one of the talks to, during the conference organized by CNTLS, you know, that um, um, uh, was it uh, Lapola that um, he had mentioned that uh, something about this, uh, the words being monosyllabic, you know, and that uh, there is something behind the monosyllabic uh, words. So, uh, Maybe this is uh, uh, something that one can really look into and uh, see why it is only in monosyllabic words. And maybe uh, uh, you all deal with the tones and uh, with phonology and so on and so forth. Uh, probably you all could give uh, an answer to that too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was, uh, it's interesting because, uh, well, it, it's uh, so when you talk about this from a, is marking point of view, mm. uh, looking at syntax and uh, maybe morphology, uh, but that logical aspect, that, yeah. that explanation, I think uh, it would be interesting to look look at it from that aspect as well. Why yeah. this affects only certain kinds of uh, words. Uh, also, just in relation to this, is this only uh, with uh, Tinidi? Do you see this in other related uh, this this kind of a phenomena uh, in the other related languages, like yes. Uh, so uh, when I had um, when I had given that talk on the VA and the VO verbs um, 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 uh, in the languages within the Tenidi group, uh, so I had looked at Zemi and uh, Chokri and Teja and so and so forth, uh, like the others. Um, I did find that uh, some of them uh, follow this pattern, whereas some did not. You know, so there is a, it can be grouped again, you know, so we can have a, a different kinds of groupings uh, uh, with this phenomenon too. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Okay, any other participants? You know, what I find most interesting is uh, that uh, the VO verbs, it occurs with the verbal reciprocal, you know, and the VA verb, it occurs with the, the, the nominal reciprocal. You know, again, the distribution of uh, the <clears throat> uh, and the verbal reciprocal and the fact that the verbal reciprocal um, uh, as we find in other languages too, it has a detransitivizing effect. So mm -hmm. um, instead of going and attaching itself to the VA verb, which already permits its object to be dropped, it goes and attaches itself to the VO verb, you know? Okay. So, so that is something which I find very interesting and uh, which I plan to look into the other languages as well, whether this phenomenon is found. All right, all right, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, someone has raised the, with the okay. name iPhone. I think it might be Madam Zhangte. Yeah, ma'am, yeah, you can unmute and speak. Okay, um, that was really interesting. It reminds me of a paper Scott Delancey wrote on um, Tibetan, uh, and he, it was uh, called uh, Volitionality in Lhasa Tibetan. 
where uh, very similar um, uh, syntactic, uh, you know, you know, yeah, changes in regards to ergative, ergative marking. Mm -hmm. um, the question I had was, I was not sure what you meant by mo mono transitive. Is that the same as intransitive, or is that something else? Um, and uh, the second question I had was, um, if um, you know, if you had an example where you have the verb like sneeze, because uh, so. So it has to be, you know, you can cough on purpose, but you cannot sneeze on purpose. Yes. And that was one example they had in Tibetan where, you know, it was, you know, you could really see that. So I was just wondering if you had that example. Yes. Uh, so yeah. the first, um, to answer your first question. Um, yeah. Yes, the, intran the intransitive and the monotransitive. Um, yeah. Um, it's different. Um, the intransitive. Okay. Uh, is verb is the one that uh, uh, does not permit an object, like for example, sleep, uh -huh. and, uh, die, and uh, sleep. So um, yeah. it, it does not permit an uh, an object. Whereas a monotransitive, so it permits one object. You know. Uh, okay, so don't, don't kick the. So bone. that is what normally I would call the transitive, and then uh, you know some people use the term die transitive, where you can have two objects, right? Yeah, so monotransitive and yeah. transitive. So ditransitive, uh, yeah. as I, you know, like it, it takes two objects, whereas a monotransitive yeah. is one object. Yeah, so intransitive, yeah. Yeah. monotransitive, and uh, ditransitive. Yeah, and coming yeah. back okay. to the, the, the sneeze and the cough. Yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, if there is, um, so sneeze, as you rightfully said, uh, you cannot deliberately sneeze, you know, so hence, the ergative marker is uh, will never occur with uh, with the subject uh, in the. Yeah. But if one were to deliberately say, and then maybe um, um, uh, during a drama or a play, you know, where the actor had to sneeze, you know, yeah, and and, and give a very deliberate sneeze, then uh, probably uh, the the suffix a would uh, would emerge. You know? Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, which brings me to my next question. Uh, have you compared it with, with like a causatives that you make someone, you know, you force someone to do something like, mm -hmm. you know, you know, I made him cry. I made him laugh. You know. um, have you looked at those also? Um, Where, you know, yes. they're being externally be made, made to do um, something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, uh, as I said, um, the A marking uh, uh -huh. it does not normally occur with the first person and the second person singular pronouns. Yeah. But then it would occur with uh, with the third person, a singular and yeah. the other O and you know. So um, yeah. uh, with that deliberate or the causative uh, act in the third person, yes, it would it would occur. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So so that that's really interesting. Yes. And um, so like, you know, like I, you know, like for example, if you're somewhere and you know people expect you to cry or something, and you can't cry, then you can say I made myself cry. So what would be the situation in um, no, the construction in, in a situation like that? Uh, yeah. I, I is the first person singular. So in that case yeah. too. Uh, the ergative marker would never occur, you know, yeah. because it is the uh, because the case system is a split, and uh, yeah. the first person and the second person would never take the a marking. But if it were to take, then it would be you know like to to promote or to say that I was the one who did it. I definitely did it, you know, and uh, yeah. to um, to kind of give that kind of meaning that kind of interpretation yeah. you know that um, or the deliberateness or the emphasis of one's own yeah. act you know then yeah it would occur. yeah but then normally it would not occur yes so as an agent so so it's it's um has to do with you know a, 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 you know the hierarchy of them being more agentive so so like you got the I don't remember which uh, example where you got the passive interpretation 
because yes, the, exactly. you know the person has been demoted, uh, yes. the agent has been demoted. Yeah, so yes. so you have an agent demotion, and then you can also have agent promotion, right? So yeah, that's that's, that's very fascinating. Yeah, do you yes, have this written up somewhere? Have, uh... Yeah. Um, um, no, it has not been published as yet, uh -huh. but uh, it was a part of my PhD. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I have presented papers, but uh, not uh -huh. uh, uh, kind of. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, it was published um, in uh, an article on the case system and the tone system um, in um, one journal that is uh, yeah. Kashmir. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it, it does not have really wide wide circulation that that journal. So yeah, yeah, I, it has been read by. Have you <laughs> considered that Himalayan linguistics? They they publish um you know papers mm -hmm. you know re related to better Burman languages. Okay, I I they I are the they are that. the only ones I know of currently that publish to better Burman languages as you know as a journal. It's a peer reviewed yeah. journal. Oh, right. Yeah, oh. you might want to look into that. Yeah, yes, I I will do that. Yeah, yeah. Bautang has been published in that, so he okay. might you know right. be able to tell you more. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Chanke. Nice hearing from you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yes. I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> I know. We yeah. just met once yeah. only at one conference, I think. You know, long time. Back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very briefly. Yeah. yeah. So. News conference, I think it was. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you, Madam Zangte, for that uh, question query and for that information. Now, uh, Bia has raised the hand. Uh, Bia, you can unmute and speak. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Uh, this is Bia. Um, I have uh, two broad questions. Uh, just for a general question on teeny day tones. Um, what is your take and the in, uh, what is your take on the teeny day tones? Or how, what is the inventory of tones in Dinide? And the second uh, question is, you use particularly two tones, low and high tones. Um, so does case marking confine itself only to two types of tone in Dinide? Um, yes, to answer your second question, yes. You find only the two tones operating um, on the case system. Um, and uh, as for my take on the tonal, uh, on the tones uh, system of, of Teni De, um, uh, a lot of papers have been written on it and a lot of people have done studies on it, um, on this. And uh, there are some who follow the five, the five tone system and uh, some who follow the four tone system. Um, but um, I, um, I follow the, the four tone system and uh, the fifth tone is um, something which I say is uh, the, the, the length. So the difference between the, the, um, the fourth, the, the third or the second from, from the top, the, the second and the third tone is a matter of, uh, of, of length for me and not of a tonal difference. Yeah, so the, the the tonal marking that I have used um, in in this talk is uh, um, uh, uh, follows um, uh, that of one of my papers um, that is with the four tones. So the extra high, the high, the low, and the extra low. Yes, I hope that answered your question. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Bia. And now we have uh, participants with the name Realme C3. Yeah, I could not <laughs> identify as it is. Yeah, please unmute and speak. Uh, yes, uh, thank, thank you for this time. Um, good evening, ma'am. Uh, see, in your presentation, uh, yes, I can. I see. Yes, yes, I am. Okay. I don't like your voice. Ma'am, see, uh, I check. I, I didn't. Uh, means remember properly but enough force on in verb or something like that can you please could explain again i couldn't understand. you want me to go back to the slide yes you um, want me to show again? okay okay
One and Anna first, huh? Yes, yes, Anna first. This one? I think it is on Can you see it? Uh, before, the, yes. Reflexive. Yes, yes, interaction of verb with enough for the, Could you please explain yes. again? <laughs> oh, okay, all right. So the thing is that um, the VA verb, all right, um, it occurs with the nominal reciprocal, and the nominal reciprocal is the konyevo. All right. And uh, it also occurs with the nominal re re reflexive, like ogotyoko. All right. Um, so, and the VO verb, it occurs with the verbal re reciprocal uh, only. For, so, this is the, the verbal reciprocal over here, this K. Okay. All right. Okay. And uh, the mu is with the low tone, so hence it is a VO verb. All right. Now, the thing is that um, uh, I was trying to give an explanation as to why this uh, K, it occurs with the, oh, sorry, there's a, uh, I've made a mistake over here uh, in the tonal marking. It should be the low tone, not, not, not the high tone over here. All right. So it should be Kengu, not Mu. Uh, so uh, why it occurs with the VO is that um, the VO, it uh, does not permit its objects to be dropped, as uh, I had mentioned earlier. The VO verb does not permit its object to be dropped, whereas the VA, it permits its objects to be dropped. So now again, this K, it is, it is uh, the verbal reciprocal, is, it, it gives a detransitivizing effect. All right, it is a detransitivizer. That means it detransitivizes the verb. So out of these two verbs, the VA and the VO, okay, it would be more natural to choose the verb that does not permit its objects to be dropped and then to detransitivize that verb than to detransitivize a verb that already permits its object to be dropped. Do you understand? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So I hope you understood that. All right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so are you clear to go below? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, okay all right. Mm. Yeah, meantime, when we are waiting for uh, other participants to come in, uh, as per the question which was raised by Bia and the Madam Sangte, uh, that it is my inference only, Madam, uh, that the E marking is not happening in uh, cogitic construction in TNED, like uh, making cry something or something to sneeze or no, in no, that, no. yeah, the E is not no, happening. No, uh, mark. no, no, no. It, it is not that the A marking is not coming in causative constructions. It okay. is the thing is that the A marking does not occur in the first person and the second person, but mm. it, it occurs uh, in the third person, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it will come in causative like constructions also if the subject is in the third person. Okay. I got a point. And and another... The first person and the second person singular they carry the high tone, all right, and the high tone is the nominative case, whereas the A is the ergative. All right. Yeah. Yes, and another thing, ma'am, as per your analysis and study it, mm. so mm. your tag is, uh, there are two tones in 10 AD. So... No, 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 four. 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 Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, in some literature that we have gone through or we heard of it like extra thing, extra low, extra high. So you don't treat them as a tone. That, that is the length. No, 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 no. In, um, 
in my tonal system <laughs> of the language okay, okay. we have um, i have the extra high the high the okay. low and the extra low okay so no mid no okay. mid no mid because uh, my uh, my take is that uh, um if there are three tones or five tones then it it makes sense to talk of a mid tone you know that occurs between the one and the two or the three and the four but when we are talking about four tones then what will be the mid tone because four is an even number you know okay. i mean like that is how i see things you know but uh, like uh, tensor and uh, and priyanku and those other phonologists would uh, have a different take on it i suppose yes okay mm. yeah thank you so yes we invite still a uh, question and query from our participants mm. Mm. yes Uncle Marshall, uh, any question, query, observation, or anything that you want to share? I, yes, I just wanted to uh, mm -hmm. say that uh, can it be a, as per Madam's presentation, seems to be a, a language which is a very complicated nature in form, in terms of form. Okay. So. <clears throat> Uh, among so many interesting things, among so many uh, IPA characters, uh, that you know, I am not a professional linguist. I am simply a community linguist, but still, um, I have been given the knowledge of some uh, uh, IPA characters mm -hmm. that mat that matches to. Uh, my language. But today I saw one thing, uh, so, many, so many things in Canadian um, uh, uh, IPA notings. Among that, uh, that, that uh, the lady who was asking the question with uh, VO and VA. This VO and VA, Madam has explained, but I could not still um, understand it is this V O and V A verb? V O and V A is this the uh, one technical thing of linguistics nature, or is that of Canadian only? <laughs> if it is of linguistics, then I will come later on. I don't want I don't want to waste the time of the members. But if it is of the technical thing. Then I will come later with, I will follow it with the uh, begin also. Mm -hmm. But if it is especially for Canadian, uh, then I, I would like to still listen to uh, it more from there. <laughs> okay, Sir Moise, uh, thank you for that question. Um, yes, now this uh, term VA and the VO, it is very specific to the Tenidia language. And it is a terminology which I had to come up with, looking into the nature of the types of monotransitive verbs that we find in the language. So the thing is that uh, the, the um, uh, I have not come across this language in the, or this type of uh, verbs, uh, or this phenomenon in other languages, um, but I, I have dealt with the languages within the, the, the Tenime group. And uh, I have found that there are some languages under the Tenime group, and I have also presented the paper on that, uh, where we do find this phenomenon. Um, now, the why I had to come up with this distinction is that um, uh, both, of, uh, both the VA and the VA, they are both monotransitive, no doubt. All right. So, the thing is that uh, uh, now in the literature, uh, when you look at the intransitive verbs, you find that there is a division in the intransitive verbs where you have the, um, um, the, the unaccusative and the, um, and the ergative verbs. So, uh, so in the same manner, I said, okay, there is a difference between the, the verbs um, um, 
in uh, the monotransitive verbs or the monosyllabic uh, verbs uh, in Tenidia. So I had to come up with this with this term neurology that is the VA and the VO. So why VA is that um, the um, the verb A it stands for agent and uh, this verb it bears a closer relationship to the to the to the agent of the sentence and uh, the VO where the O is that it bears a closer relationship with the ONP um, and because it bears a closer relationship with the ONP the ONP cannot be dropped uh, when there is a VO verb whereas uh, in the VA verb the ONP can be dropped and the thing is that the there is a total agreement between the 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 subject that is um, the first person and the second person with the VA and uh, there is total agreement with the first person and the second person when it is uh, an ONP with the VO verb you know so this is something which is very uh, unique to the language and hence uh, this terminology had to be brought about and uh, I don't think you will find it uh, in the literature of of linguistics uh, in other in other languages yes Angar, are you clear or do you want uh, some more? Vivian, can I come in? Okay, okay, sir. Yeah, okay. please. Hi, Pogtan. Yeah. Hello, Pogtan, sir. You are not audible, sir. Sorry, my power line was just cut off. Okay, Uncle. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, you're audible now, sir. Please. Okay, I have two questions. Uh, one uh, related to what has been explained just now. And the other one uh, is uh, related to what you call this uh, syntactic versus semantic case marking. Mm. So uh, as, ex as uh, explained by you, uh, this language Tenedi allows uh, two types of marking uh, based on uh, semantics and syntactic. So, um, is this uh, what you call marking um, totally dependent on the nature of the verb? So, some verbs uh, tend to have syntactic type of marking, whereas other verbs uh, tend to have uh, um, tend to have a semantic type of marking. So. Mm -hmm. Is there a strict, what you call, uh, uh, strict division between the verbs of the language, uh, which goes with uh, syntactic, and the other uh, which goes with uh, semantic? So this is one question. Mm. The other question is uh, very interesting uh, re uh, with, re with uh, relation to your VA and VO kind of uh, uh, thing. So I, it seems uh, from the explanation that you gave, some verbs uh, uh, tend to uh, tend to be uh, closely connected, or on the basis of the nature of the verb, you can uh, you can uh, come to some kind of conclusion that if these verbs occurs, then it should it should it should be uh, it should be attached to the subject. So, which you call it uh, VA, yeah, and yeah. some uh, verbs uh, which uh, if, uh, some verbs. Uh, usually relates to the object. So, mm. this uh, how do is how do you reconcile this fact? How do you say that some verbs have a relationship with the object, while other verbs have relationship with the uh, with, with with the subject or with the agent? So, is this uh, semantic or is it syntactic? Thank you. Well, uh, to answer that question, um, I would say that it is both. You can give a syntactic explanation to it, and you can give a semantic uh, explanation to it. Also, you know, it is uh, um, um, like whichever explanation one one would like to give. So, on the semantic basis, um, um, or um, you can say that they mean the same thing. You know, so the the semantics is the same actually. All right. It is just that with the tonal difference, uh, the the syntax of the of the verb uh, changes. 
where one permits object to be dropped and the other one does that uh, does not permit uh, its object to be dropped. And at the phonological level, uh, one um, um, has uh, the same tone as the subject, whereas the other one it has the same tone as the object. Um, so, um, and what was the first question? Sorry. Um, My first question was, uh, you talk about uh, uh, semantically based yes. case marking and uh, synthetically yes. based marking. Yes. So yes. is this uh, dependent on the nature of the verbs or what? Yes, uh, I yes, I did uh, uh, bring out the verbs, which uh, there are some intransitive verbs which can never take the A marking. All right. And uh, there are some uh, transitive verbs um, uh, which um, which do not take the a marking, but this is dependent on whether the subject is the first person or the second person or the third person. You know. Okay, you mean to say there is uh, more the, to do with uh, whether the subject is first person yes, or second exactly. person than so the nature of the verb. So it is nothing to do no, with the nature of the verb. It, no, the no, subject. it has got to do with the nature of the verb as well. All right, so if it is okay. intransitive, then it will not take. There are some intransitive verbs which will not permit uh, the thing. And again, there are some intransitive verbs which uh, when, you, um, uh, when you use it, then it will give the act of uh, the meaning of deliberateness or volitionality and so and so forth, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that are happening actually. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, because there's so much happening, it is because, as I, uh, as I said in the end, it is because the language is undergoing a transition. And whenever there's transition, there's a lot of chaos, uh, I mean, um, anywhere, you know? Mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, so probably the language is moving towards uh, uh, either from an acquisitive system to an ergative system or from an ergative system to an, to an acquisitive system. So I think uh, this is a period where we are undergoing change. And um, actually, th there's something which I, I should have mentioned. It is, uh, um, I am um, uh, one, I spent a lot of time with one of my colleagues, mm. Uh, mm. Mr. Metio uh, uh, Liesetu, on the distribution oh. of suffix Okay, uh, I, I got that line. So can you give me some more information? So which stone, which stone? Uh, Tend yeah. to go along with uh, 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 with syntactic uh, kind of uh, case marking or semantic type of case marking. So we have two types of tones which sits on the on the on this uh, on the on the agent. Yes. So which uh, which of the two tones uh, tend to sit with uh, semantically based type of marking or synthetically based type of marking? Is there a relationship of no, the, that no. sort? No, no, it no. is uh, the tonal marking is um, uh, on the normative and the acquisitive. Okay, not on so the argative. Is... No. Not on the argative. Not on the argative. Okay. So the first person and the second person, all right. So the first person in the subject position will be marked by the high tone. The first person in the object position will be marked by a low tone. So the nominative is marked by a high tone and the accusative is marked by a low tone. So also in the second person, singular, the high tone uh, is no and the low tone is n. But in the second person, you have the low tone as well as a morphological change. So from no, it changes to n. So uh, 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 there is a total like difference also, whereas uh, from the third person onwards we we get the the ergative case, that is the suffix a. So okay. the nominative and the accusative is marked by tone. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rest we can uh, talk to each other later on. Uh, yes. uh, lastly, mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by uh, do you make a distinction between nominative and ergative, or are, are, are they the same? So you have nominative accusative. Can I, uh, so what is this nominative? Is it is it that optional uh, argative, or is there a distinction between nominative and argative? There is a distinction. Uh, uh, nominative, um, as I said nominative earlier. Are, yeah. No, so, in your in your data. 
In my data, yes. Are you making the distinction between nominative and argative? Yes, definitely. Okay. So, okay. Uh, the a marker is the the a suffix is the ergative marker. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, the tonal marking, so the nominative and the accusative is marked by tone. Like for example, in English, all right, you have uh, John came or John went there, you know, like John is in the nominative case. But, but the thing is that uh, there is no morphological marking on John, but we know that it is in the nominative case. Whereas in mm -hmm. Kenidae, the form is still the same. However, mm -hmm. there is a difference in tone. You know, so so the nominative will carry a high tone and the accusative will carry the low tone. So, for example, um, I saw uh, him or I saw John, it will be a, uh, a, uh, that is a high tone, a, uh, John, mu. And uh, uh, you saw me, it will be no, a, uh, mu. So it is a low tone. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we, the rest we can discuss. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, is there any participants who wants to ask or to have one, some query from the speaker? Yeah. Meantime, we have something in the chat box. Uh, this is from Changte Madam. So she wrote. This presentation is a perfect example of why you, you need to pay attention to phonology in uh, Tibeto-Burman languages. Many people working on Tibeto-Burman uh, morphosyntax often ignore phonology. <laughs> okay. All right. Mm. If we don't have any other participants uh, for a question or query, then I would like to invite uh, Dr. Bovita Sarangtem, the treasurer of Tivlani, to uh, propose a of thanks. Thank you, Bijin. It's my uh, proud privilege uh, to propose the vote of thanks on this ninth talk of Tivlani weekly series. Um, I take these opportunities to express our, concern, our sincere thanks and uh, gratitude to Professor Mimi, uh, for sharing us such an informative, valuable insights on case and tone system in Tenide, and also the interplay of tone bearing uh, verbs with anaphores in Tenide are indeed very interesting. And um, thank you very much, ma'am, for such an enlightenment for to us, giving us that. Uh, uh, I would also like to thank uh, everyone for actively participating in the talk and joining us today. Uh, we will of course see you again in the next talk. Uh, till then we'll wait and look forward for the next talk series. With this, uh, thank you all uh, for once again being here. Okay. Thank you. So we had a very good uh, discussion. We had a good time. Uh, so thank you everyone. Have a pleasant evening. So we'll meet again in the next week. Thank you. We will do that. All right, bye. Okay, bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.